I talk with people all day long who, as a child, you know, their parents or one of their parents was on a diet and they, you know, they always restricted the types of foods in the house. And the second they had their own freedom, they exerted their independence and their freedom by buying all these foods they weren't allowed to eat or foods that they were made to feel bad about eating. Hey there, Adam. So this week we are going to be responding to a comment we got on our most recent podcast where we discussed how to feel satiated, how to achieve satiety um, by managing our intake of processed foods. There was a comment on this video that actually prompted us to come up with a pretty good video for today. So why don't you lead us in? Yeah. You know, the video or the podcast last week was about in a world where companies are creating foods to be addicting, what do we do? And that was our answer. Um, and the comment was, you know, it's interesting how you only indulge a few times per week, yet you allow your kids to eat. You allow your kids to indulge every day. Whew, that's loaded. Yes. <laughs> so, all right, now we have two responses. Like, why do you let your kids eat this stuff all the time? That's the question and our responses are, first and foremost, stance that we are taking. We want to neutralize all food. That's our goal, right? Do you agree, disagree? Agree. Ideally, I want you to think about food as just food. It's not your best friend, it's not your worst enemy, it's only food. And mm -hmm. I think sometimes just saying that to yourself could really help you realize it's only food. And that is the goal. That is my goal for my children. That is my goal for you, for our clients. Just, it's only food. Right, and on on two sides of that, one is if you, if you think of food as any other way, if it's not neutral, well, it might be forbidden fruit, right? Like you call it all the time, forbidden fruit. Like if, if these things are restricted, they become even more desirable. Yes. I talk with people all day long who, as a child, you know, their parents or one of their parents was on a diet and they, you know, they always restricted the types of foods in the house. And the second they had their own freedom, they exerted their independence and their freedom by buying all these foods they weren't allowed to eat or foods that they were made to feel bad about eating. Mm -hmm. So I've seen, mm -hmm. I see it all day long of what happens when you take these foods away and you say, no, no, no. You know, again, the second you, these people have the opportunity to buy these foods or indulge in them, they go to it to the nth degree. Right. Yep. And it creates a, a lifelong struggle. It really does. Uh, you know, it can take a lot of years and a lot of time to unravel all that. And I would say on the other side of things, I definitely witnessed people who, you know, growing up may have eaten, you know, these forbidden fruit foods in their homes and then made to feel ashamed for it, right? There's that other side of it too. Like you're bad, you're wrong. Why are you eating Doritos? Why are you eating junk food? And, and that again, creates a really long lifetime of struggle, um, you know, mentally and emotionally. And guess what that leads to? <laughs> eating emotionally, right? So, so that's our number one response is, is we want to neutralize these foods. All food is just trying to do good. It's just food, right? Yes. Okay. So number two response to why would you let your kids eat this all the time? Um, well, at home, it's the place to develop some skills. We want to equip them for real world scenarios well, with everything, but with food, right, Adam? Yeah, you know, I don't want my kids to live in a bubble. I want them to, you know, the hardest part about being a parent is your, the goal of a parent, I think, is to put yourself out of a job, right? And ideally, and the dream for me is I want my kids to want me in their life when they're older and ideally not need me in their life. Very big difference. And part of that though is I want to equip them to succeed in every aspect 
you know, possible, as much as possible, and I'm going to do everything I can, especially in this case when it comes to food. I want them to be able to have the knowledge, have the skills, have the emotional understanding of how food makes them feel, the types of foods they feel good with, all that good stuff. And if I'm creating an environment where I'm basically bubble wrapping them, where it's a perfect environment, everything is perfect for them, I don't feel like I'm setting them up to succeed in the real world, when they're at school, when they're out to college, and then eventually when they live on their own. Yes, 100%. I couldn't agree more. And listen, we want to make this really clear. This is not a parenting no. PSA. <laughs> like, we're not saying we know the right way. You know, there are millions of paths people take to parent their kids. And I really, truly believe that everybody is just out there trying to do their best for their kids. But we did want to comment in this regard. And so I think it's a good time. Let's let's talk about some of the specifics, right? Some of the skills in particular that we're trying to equip our kids with in these safe home environments where we can expose them and help them neutralize food. So the first one on my list and your favorite, perhaps, moderation. Yeah, so, you know, I want my kids to understand which foods they feel satiated with and which foods they feel like, hey, I can't stop eating them. So recently my son, my youngest son was eating chips and he said to us, he's like, I can't stop. I want more and more, right? And like, I'm like, to me, it was like, ooh, this is a great time to have a conversation about this. And I said, listen, I get it. I know how that feels. And we started talking about how different foods can make us feel different ways. And I said, hey, how do you feel when you eat fruit? How do you feel when you eat vegetables? How do you feel when you eat chips? And I saw the light bulb going off like, wow, yeah, maybe when I eat these foods, I don't feel this way. And when, when I eat the, this food, when I eat these chips, I feel insatiable. And I think he now knows that, hey, there's nothing wrong with having chips. But when he does, he might feel that uncomfortable feeling of wanting more and more. Hmm. Interesting. There's actually some sub skills in there in moderation noticing how they feel, right? So like we get the opportunity to help our kids develop some self-awareness, to learn how their bodies feel, um, self-knowledge, right? So that's that's a couple more skills thrown in there in that little chat and experience. And I think it's really important, right? It doesn't have to be heavy work. I think that's another really key thing. Like this doesn't have to be like big emotional, deep work. Right. It's just like, hey, buddy, like how does it feel when you eat these things? And now, like you said, now he knows, right? Like, oh, chips kind of make me want more chips. Cool. No problem. Just great awareness. Um, you know, I'll, I'll throw in another skill here, behavior change, right? And this is probably <laughs> something for kids of the older crowd. I know my daughter is struggling a little bit and has come home from time to time and asked me about like, how do I deal with wanting to eat sugar, right? Like she's with her friends a lot. It's kind of a cool thing. Let's get some candy. Let's hang out, right? So at home, we really talk about like, okay, what's that feel like? Do you notice times you tend to want sugar more? Can you kind of take a moment and see like, have I been watching a lot of TV? Have I been laying around? Am I thirsty? I said, fruit is a great option. Like if you really are clear, like you don't want to eat any sugar, like grab a piece of fruit, have some water, brush your teeth, right? So now we're starting into some of that behavioral change process, which listen, I mean, she's 12. So again, I'm not making it super heavy, but this is an opportunity, right? Like here in the ground floor, like giving her some skills for behavior change. Like I don't want to do this anymore. What can I do about it? Right. Which I think is really cool and so important. Right. Like, let's not wait until we're adults to learn this. Right. And, you know, to your point about the TV, like, so, you know, the Knicks have been doing awesome. Um, I'm a diehard mm -hmm. Knicks fan and, you know, my kids love basketball. I mean, we've been watching the games and we've been, you know, bending bedtime a little bit here. So they've been staying up for the games. And, you know, there's a ton of commercials and a lot of food commercials. And it's interesting to notice how, you know, every now and then they'll be like, oh, I'm hungry. And it's like. And we'll ask, like, again, we're not going super deep here, but it's like, are you actually hungry for food or are you just kind of in the mood to eat? And that, you know, spurs a wonderful conversation. And they realize, that, eh, I'm just kind of in the mood to eat because it's fun, right? They just feel like snacking mm -hmm. on something. And there's nothing wrong with that. But, you know, them identifying when they're actually hungry for food or just because it's something else. Again, we're not going super deep, but I think it's a super right. powerful skill, right? I mean, that is 
the beginning of understanding if they're emotional eating or they're stress eating or they're nervous about the game, whatever it might be, right? They have some sort of feeling they want to eat. So we'll say like, hey, if you're hungry, you know, let's, we'll cut up some, you know, vegetables or you want a banana. And then they're like, eh, it's like, all right, I guess you weren't, you know, that hungry, right? And they laugh, <laughs> like they get it, right? And yeah. to me, that is a great skill, such an important skill to have. And I want them to have that because, you know, if we didn't have any temptations in the house, and not that I'm creating this environment where I'm making them, you know, have this immense willpower or anything like that, but like, there's some of their favorite foods in the house and they don't get to eat it all day long every day. But being able to have that relationship with food is really important. Yes. And I, I think, you know, these are a lot of the skills we work very hard to teach our clients, right? And I think it's a pretty cool opportunity to start that younger. And, you know, we have to be really careful with how we talk about it too. Like we want to keep it neutral. We want to keep it light. Um, we definitely want to keep shame out of it. Don't want to moralize anything. It's tricky. It's really tricky. But I think like all the skills we as adults use to get ourselves healthy, there's no reason not to help our kids learn these things too. So I think, you know, in a safe environment, having some of these trickier foods around is really, really smart. Yeah. So again, as you mentioned, I am certainly not a parenting expert. I want to make that clear. I've never been a parent before. I've only been a parent for 10 years. We're all learning on the job, right? And, yes. you know, yes. I don't <laughs> pretend to be this expert. Um, but I do believe that it is helpful to teach your skills, to, I'm sorry, to teach your kids skills and behaviors and mindsets that will last them for life, right? That to me is my goal. And, you know, everyone can do to each their own, but that's the way I approach this. So, you know, to kind of circle back on the original comment, you know, I feel like having this bubble at home is not going to set them up for the long term. Excellent. All right, Adam. Well, thanks for listening, guys. Thanks for tuning in. If you have any further comments, please, as always, feel free to leave them or email Adam. We love to hear from you and we will look forward to seeing you next time. Yeah. Take and hey, care. if it's a great comment, maybe we'll make another video about it. <laughs> Absolutely. We always appreciate it. Take care, guys. Talk soon.